Hey, this is Nate here. And what you see is a demo for the Eclipse Light Engine. And in this video, I'm going to go over a tool that I made that goes with it for packing all the materials and normal maps into a single image texture for use within the engine. And I, I use it to make the texture here for this robot and the emissive texture uh, in the background here with the Slava. So let me fire it up. So this is the tool. Uh, that I'll have a download link for it and it's available for free so the way to use it you can just go on these different tabs you have material normal map you can just drag your normal map in everything's just drag and drop you have your albedo roughness metallic and ambient occlusion and if you want to preview what it would look like in Eclipse you just hit the lit and middle mouse lets you drag around the light see what it does Right mouse lets you move it. Mouse wheel zooms in and out. And th this is pretty standard how you'd get most PBR materials if you download a pack. Uh, this one's from freepbr.com. It has a, they're free. You can use them. Um, or you can pay, I think it's like $7, and you can get the whole pack downloaded in a single file, which is pretty convenient. Um, this tool is not intended to make textures necessarily. At least not like these full PBR ones, but you can do some minor edits. You can adjust the metallic and roughness of it, and you can have the AO the influence some of it if you'd like. Uh, it's also kind of neat if you you can mix some of them. So if I wanted to make this skeleton, uh, let's find a good texture. If I change his base color, see now I, can, I got got a new texture. Looks pretty nice. You you can do a lot of different edits that way. Play with them. Give them different, you know, use the roughness from this one might look okay. And the metallic, so, you know, it, it's for minor edits or for a quick PBR viewer, but it's it's not intended for a full material editing suite or software or anything like that. There's there's better tools out there for that, but it the usefulness is this right here. It creates this image map which can be exported and saved for use within Game Maker. And, and the light engine asset that I'm going to be uh, releasing soon. So when you first load it up, the save location, whatever you drag in first, it's going to it's going to copy that path. Or you can select it, you know, if you want to throw it on your desktop. Uh, when you hit save, it's going to save whatever the current one you're looking at is. So it would save the material map. If I go to normal and hit save, it would then just save that normal map. Um, the, the purpose for the normal map here is not really to edit the normal map whatsoever. But within the Eclipse engine, the emissive texture is baked into the uh, alpha of the normal map. So I could show an example here with that lava was, uh, that was in the uh, video. So if I add, this is the same lava texture that was used in there. I'm going to add it in. And the normal. So without the emissive, this is about what it would look like. Um, not too bright <laughs> but if I take the emissive and drag it in what it's gonna do it's gonna use the very first bit of the normal to represent whether the normals there or not and then the, all the bits above that are gonna be the emissive value from 1 to 0 0.99 or something like that so now when I look at the material let's see it's nice lit up all that emissive shows up and within the engine itself I can load that back up too. You can you can also oscillate it and do whatever you want with it. As you can see, it's it's kind of fading in and out. So that's just from baking the alpha of the emissive into the normal map, and then when everything's rendered, it just samples from the regular color and throws that in the, into the bloom shader. And it looks pretty nice. Very simple. Saves on a lot of memory having it baked straight into the normal map like that. So the other nice use with this tool is generating material maps for sprites. And if we look at a sprite here, you know, typically they have a lot of alpha going around the edges and transparent pixels and stuff. And it's not the same as just slapping a texture onto a, like a 3D image. Plus sprites, if you have an artist making them, they, they usually don't include a normal map with a sprite. But I'm going to show two ways to generate them one is free um, it's this website right here normal map online and there's other tools out there just like this for free 
uh, and then uh, this another tool I have is uh, is a paid one that I kind of prefer. It just it just makes much nicer looking normal maps. But you just drag it in there, and there's some adjustments you can do up here. I've messed with them some, and it's hit or miss results. It's it's not bad. It's it's definitely a normal map. You you can save it and then throw it up in this material packer and and, and see how the lighting works. Um, the other useful thing that I do totally recommend for this is the ambient occlusion is is really good here it's it's really just converting it to grayscale but you can you can play with the sliders and get you know some decent results for sprites it it's definitely it does the job looks really looks nice enough the other option for ambient occlusion if you once you have a normal map you can throw it in blender and bake it from blender as well which i can show how that's done here and with the material packer, I'll include this little blender file, and all you have to do is just swap out the image. Um, and this, this too, if you have a good normal map, it, it'll turn out pretty good. So you just select the normal map right here on the sh um, normal or that image texture, and over here hit bake. It's all set up. So you know, there's a, there's a ton of tutorials out there on how to bake ambient occlusion or normals, and and you can see it. This one doesn't turn out so hot, but it, it works. <laughs> uh, what I would do with this one is take it into Photoshop and touch it up and, you know, mess with some of the levels. So that's why I kind of do for some, it really depends on how the pixels look and if it's HD or not, how it's going to turn out with, when you're generating stuff like this. So at the end of the day, you probably want to do some by hand editing to make it look a lot nicer. But this normal map is an, it's a bit nicer looking and it was made in a tool called Sprite Illuminator and this is a this is a paid tool but the normal maps are, are just much nicer um, it's, it's worth it so what you can do it starts out flat and you can hit bevel and this will give it like a contour of like the whole shape as you can see and you can, you can adjust it and play with it and smoothness. this and, and what I found is then you when you hit a emboss play with it a little bit but then if you emboss it multiple times depending on what you got especially if you had like pixel art you could probably get a better a better looking normal so that that looks a lot better than that website and that's pretty much what this one was done with so then you would export it and then in the material packer just drag it into the normal map slot and as you can see all this blue here um, you might uh, throw it in Photoshop and clean it up but I added a little clip option here which whatever you drag here it's gonna alpha clip the other two so as you can see now the normal map has an alpha clip so you don't have to use multiple programs just to do something that simple so now that it has Al albedo and a normal map um, and I here's that ambient occlusion I showed earlier I just grabbed that beforehand so the metal and the roughness um, if you needed to do like per pixel material generation this is not the tool for that you should definitely use something like I don't know mixer or by Quixel or you know there's there's a ton of surface painter and stuff like that but with this what I can do is now tweak the values and I can actually get see some lighting and this little tick box for use AO what that's gonna do is gonna take the ambient occlusion it's gonna factor it into the, the metallic or the roughness and try to try to vary it more than just you know a flat image of uh, metallic or roughness it it kind of again depends on how your AO looks if it's if it's just flat white it's not gonna do much so it depends how many shadows you included when you adjusted it so but there I mean you know, without actually having to draw anything or manually create a texture I now have a 3d texture for this spaceship and you know compare it to the original it's pretty decent uh, with more time you can definitely clean up some of the the looks and make it make a better normal map the, the, the key is having a good normal map to start with is gonna have much better results and let me let me reopen it and show one more example for uh, spine and here is uh, a spine atlas of this robot that I showed at the beginning of the video and here you know the lights just lighting a flat surface it's not that not that great looking but 
And if I go back into Sprite Illuminator, we can generate a normal map. And we'll bevel it first. Just to get that thing, kind of a pillowy shape. Again, you, the longer you play with it, the better it's going to look. And then, same thing, I'm going to emboss it multiple times. And maybe higher. It's not bad. But you, what you can see is you can see the individual brush strokes, but that's just because uh, the way this was drawn, uh, they they didn't really smooth it out or bl blur it. So what, what you could do is go back into Photoshop and take the original color and, and tweak with that to get rid of those brush strokes. Uh, for this, for just a, a demonstration purpose, though, this this will do. Oh, and and even beveling it multiple times is good. Then there's these other tools you can use if you really want to like fine tune it and create the the full normal map. But once we got that, we can see, uh, and you can see those brush strokes. They're not, <laughs> they don't look that great. But I do have. I'm not going to save that one because I do have the actual. And here I got spine example. Here is a normal map where I touched it up in Photoshop and messed with it and, and made it look a little little nicer. So if I throw that in there, and I don't need a clip, it's already looking a little better. And this this AO was also created on that website. It's just it's grayscaled and kind of tweaked with, and now it's looking a lot better. Uh, let's zoom in on the head. You can see, but now if we just play with some of the metallic and roughness, I think, which one did I like? That one. That's looking good. You can get rid of some of the roughness and you get that shiny metal look. So now, you know, it's got this nice metallic looking robot that was created out of just this flat, kind of quickly brushed uh, texture atlas. And then you take those and throw them into the light engine and there's a there's a prefab spine object that you really don't have to do anything with it does all the shaders for you and creates it and I'll load up the light engine just to show it what it looks like and turn up the resolution and there you go there's like the final robot I think that one I, I, I played with you know to make it look a lot nicer but you can see when I turn up the ambient uh, lighting, it gets nice and bright. Looks <laughs> like shiny metal, and it, it takes on whatever color. So, so there will be a link in the description on where to get the tool. Uh, it should be hosted on itch, and there will also be the light demo shortly once I finish up a few few minor things and the documentation to go with it and then you know hopefully I'll have this light engine out to the public pretty soon